Good morning, church, and praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I am so, so delighted to be here this morning, even to bring the word of God to us in this, our end of year Thanksgiving service. For the sake of our visitors, whom we welcome with a lot of joy, my name is Paul Kariuki Mwangi. I'm born again. I love the Lord Jesus as my personal savior. And by the grace of God, I'm serving as the pastor of this cathedral or the provost, a duty that I carry out with a lot of humility, appreciating and acknowledging that it is by God's grace I take this responsibility. I am so blessed uh, that God has given us this day and this last month of the year 2023. I always remember with joy the times we take to dedicate the year to God in prayer. And we call on God praying for every month of the year. And I've been thanking God that every month he has carried us through. Sometimes life has been very tough with so many demands. Life has become very expensive. But this God has been so good. And sometimes I look back and I want to, you know, uh, uh, remember with joy or sing with joy that famous chorus that I didn't know, I did not know you would bless me this way. In the midst of the tough times we are living in across the world, I didn't know that you would bring us this far. And especially this year for me, so many things that have worked out, I'm looking back and giving God praise. This year has been a unique year for us at St. Stephen's. We celebrated 120 years of God's faithfulness. Praise the name of the Lord. A very expensive affair it was. And in, on the 30th of July, 2023, we marked a milestone that other generations had not gotten an opportunity to mark. We praise the Lord. We did things that had not been done. I just see the grace of God and I praise him. I would want to take a few minutes to bring forth what God has put in my heart in, uh, as I share his word. I will reflect from the two readings, the Old Testament readings from Deuteronomy chapter 16 and the epistle of Paul to the Colossians, chapter 1, verses 1 to 14. And I want to say that, or the theme that I want to share is that thanksgiving is an appointment with God. Could you say that to your neighbor? Thanksgiving is an appointment with God. It's an appointment with God. You know, sometimes we, have, we are given appointments by great people or by important people. And we want to honor that appointment a lot. Last Sunday I was not here. I missed the services because I had been given an appointment to go and be part of the Nairobi County government Thanksgiving prayers where the governor had gathered all the members of his executive, all the MCAs across the city, all the workers of Nairobi County, and they were gathered at KICC in one of the auditoriums, and we had a very beautiful service in that place, a service of thanksgiving. So appointments with important people are appointments that we cherish. If today you received a call from one of the powerful ministers of the government and the personal assistant to that person tells you the CS would want to see you on Monday at 7 o'clock. Sometimes they give even crazy hours. He wants to see you on Monday at 6 in the morning or even 5.30 in his office. Irrespective of the hour, we keep those appointments with a lot of discipline, isn't it? Because we know that's a great opportunity. You do not know what can be born out of that appointment. And when, as a church, God calls us 
to come and offer our thanksgiving. This is not an invitation that comes from the provost. This is not an invitation that comes from the elders of the church. This is an appointment by God himself. In Deuteronomy chapter 16, if you read verses 1 to verses 18, and we have only read from verses 9, God gives out or outlines three appointments with the people of Israel. I have reminded you in the past, and I want to remind you again, that the nation of Israel in the Old Testament was a picture of the church in the New Testament. It, it was an image of the church that was about to come with the coming of the Messiah. And I thank God that we are already in the Advent season to remind us that Christ our Messiah has come. And so in chapter 16, we are reminded that God required and expected the Israelites to observe three annual feasts or festivals. And in these three festivals, they were required to do a pilgrimage, to leave their homes, their villages, their towns, and they were expected to travel to the central place where God would choose as the location of the temple. During three, these three festivals, they were not supposed to celebrate or observe them in their homes and villages. They were required to travel all the distances and come to the place of the temple and worship and celebrate there. And so these three festivals are outlined in chapter 16. If you read from verses 1 through to verses 8, it talks about the festival of Passover. Then from verses 9 all the way to verses 11, it outlines what it calls the feast or the festival of weeks, Majuma. And this is also the festival that came later to be called the Pentecost. And again from verses 13 all the way to verses uh, 17, we read about the Feast of Tabernacles. At other times it's called the Feast of Booths. And in these three observances or festival, God specifically instructed his people with these words. If you read in Exodus chapter 23 and verses 14, he says, three times a year you shall celebrate a festival to me. Three times a year you shall mark festivals. You know, God is a God of seasons. And God requires that our lives are marked by seasons with him. He invites us for appointments to come and meet with him. And so the three festivals are literally appointments that God has set on his calendar for meeting with his people. These were not festivals for just people gathering in Jerusalem later when the temple was built for them to feel good and for them to meet with friends and relatives from other parts of the country or some who went uh, had even traveled abroad. No. But these festivals were a divine appointment. They were set by God. They were celebrated because God instructed the people to do so. And the desire of God was that these people would come and meet with God. In the New Testament church where we belong, God has the same desire in him. That every time we gather as a church, 
We gather with the consciousness that we are here this Sunday morning because we have an appointment with God. The devil would want to make it look different. He would want you to imagine you are just going to church because it is another Sunday. Maybe because your parents have pushed you. Maybe because you want to be seen as a good Christian. We do not come to church because we are Anglicans and we have found an Anglican church. No. Our gathering is an appointment with God. Tell your neighbor, you are here to meet with God. Do they look like they are ready to meet God? Maybe you can ask them, are you ready to meet God really? You know, maybe you came to sing. I'm not saying singing is bad. Every time I come, I remind myself I'm not here to preach to other people. I am here because I have a divine appointment with my maker. Praise the name of the Lord. And therefore, we must make our, you know, our coming to worship a moment to encounter God. That when we are being led in prayers, you are not just listening to the prayers. You are actively involved in that prayer. When we sing, you are not looking at how other people are singing. You are actively involved. You want to please God. You want to meet with this God that has asked us to leave our homes. That has called us from our, you know, to leave all other businesses and gather to meet with him. This is the principal reason why we come to church, to honor the appointment with God. And so these people were called by God three times a year. And these festivals served as beacons of remembrance of the great things that God had done for his people. So even as they came for these festivals, they are not just coming to meet with God and listen to what he has to say to them. No. The festivals were beacons of remembrance. Every festival would remind them of God's goodness. Would remind them of the enduring masses of God would remind them of the grace that God has bestowed upon them. And most importantly, they were reminded that God is, and they would acknowledge his person. Praise the name of the Lord. Does your coming to church remind you of the person of God? Does it remind you of his goodness, of his mercies, and of his blessings in your life? Verses 1 to 8, as we said, they mark the Passover. And the Passover, for example, is the feast or the festival of salvation. As they mark this Passover festival, they would be reminded that both in the Old Testament and the New Testament, the blood of the Lamb delivers people from slavery. The Old Testament people would be reminded of the blood of the lamb that they smeared on the doorposts of their houses in Egypt. And on that night, when the angel of death came, whenever he would see the mark of the blood, he would pass over that home. Praise the name of the Lord. And so they were saved from death. They were delivered by that act from the bondage in Egypt. And in the New Testament as well, we see the blood of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, that was shed on Calvary. That blood brings us deliverance from the bondage of sin. So as they mark this festival, they are not just meeting with God without an idea. They are meeting with the God of their salvation. We are gathered here to celebrate and to thank the God of our salvation. Praise the name of the Lord. I don't know whether you have been washed by that blood that was shed, not the blood of an animal, but the blood of the Lamb of God, 
Jesus Christ that was shed on Calvary. It is the blood that washes us white as snow. So every time we meet here on Sunday, we are remembering we are meeting with the God of salvation. The God who delivers us from bondages. Maybe you are here this morning and you are in one bondage or the other. You are meeting, you have an appointment with God who is able to deliver us from all manners of bondages. I pray that your bondage will be broken this morning in Jesus' name. As you encounter God in this service. Verses 9 to 12, they would celebrate the Feast of Weeks or the Feast of Pentecost as it, was came, it came to be called later. And this festival is associated with gratitude for God's ongoing blessings in providing a bountiful crop. So this festival of Pentecost coincided with the harvest of wheat. So the people would be busy harvesting wheat that God would graciously bless them in their farming or in their, in their agricultural endeavors. And after they finished harvesting, they were required to gather again in the presence of God, to come with hearts filled with gratitude, to come with hearts that acknowledge that it is not our good agricultural methods that have produced this wheat for us. It is not our soils that are so rich with minerals. They would come to acknowledge that this harvest is a continuous grace that we receive from God. Praise the name of the Lord. You know, many a times we imagine that it is the way we know how to do things. It is the way we are good workers that we are still working, either for the public service or the private sector. Wherever you are, it is important to acknowledge and to know that it is not by our goodness, it is by the continuous or ongoing blessings of God that we are where we are today. Praise the name of the Lord. And so they were required as they come for the first festival of weeks, they were required to come with gratitude, to come ready to praise the Lord for his ongoing blessings, for his provisions. And they were supposed to come and celebrate the doings of God. If you read like verses 10, they are told that they must remember, they should remember their state in Egypt, the way they would farm and work hard in farms, yet the harvest did not belong to them. It belonged to the Egyptians. They were slaves for the Egyptians. They were supposed to remember their days of poverty in Egypt. And therefore, when they remember their poverty, they were supposed to come with hearts of gratitude before God. And the memory of their poverty in Egypt was supposed to spur on their own to them to, to spur on them gratitude and generosity. That is, they remember Mahali Mungu wa mewato. Basi wanakuja na mioyo ya shukurani, na mioyo ilio na ukarimu bere za buwana. The church today, sometimes I look and imagine we have forgotten these things. We never look back and see Mahali Mungu wa metutoa. Mahali Mungu wa metuinua. We do not want to look at the poverty that God has lifted us from. We are so entangled thinking about today, thinking about our current problems. We rarely think about the great God that has lifted us to where we are. And so these people, we are called to be thankful. Just as God has called us to this appointment to bring our end of year thanksgivings as an appointment with him. Brothers and sisters, did you know that thanksgiving is the opposite of, of pride? Wakati unasikia hutaki kutoa shukurani, you can start discovering that pride is creeping into your heart. Kiburi. 
Pride makes people think that they deserve what they have. In fact, they are telling God, I am not happy with who I am. I deserve better than this. That is pride. Pride makes one not appreciate the great things that God has done so far. But if God would open our eyes and we look back from where God has picked us from, we would come with hearts that are full of gratitude, hearts that are full of generosity before God. Many times we come and our prayers are about God, do this and this. God, give me this and this. God, it is Christmas, give me this and this. I pray that we would change the story and look back at our Egypt, at our place where we, we were enslaved. At the time when we were nobody, we were not working. I remember my days when I would walk from Kayore to Buruburu to look for something that I can do to make, you know, to get meals. I want to remember where God has picked me from. The festival of Pentecost or the festival of weeks, they were to celebrate by giving a free will offering in proportion to the blessing that God had given each one of them. I don't know whether studio, you can project verse 10 of Deuteronomy 16. Just verse 10. They were to come into the presence of God, not empty-hearted. They were to carry a free will offering, something to come and honor God with. And the Bible says, then celebrate the festival of weeks to the Lord your God by giving. They were not just to come, they were required to give, tell your neighbor, by giving. And they were supposed to give a free will offering and this free will offering is described. It must be in proportion to the blessings the Lord your God has given you. Yani mungu hawezi kukubariki na wewe unaleta kitu ambacho hakiwezi linganishwa na baraka ulizo nazo. The church today has fallen into the trap. Kwa kupeana kwa ukawaida, kwa mazoea. Mtu mungu amembariki amemuinua na unaona anakuja kutoa mia moja. Si kwamba mia moja ni baya. But is it in proportion to what God has honored you with? Is it in proportion to the blessings you have received? Let me tell you, kuna mtu anaweza toa hiyo mia na bingu ijue huyo mtu amemheshimu mungu. Lakini kuna yule atatoa hiyo mia na bingu yone mtu walie jawa na kiburi. Mtu ambaye hajui kutabua wema wa mungu. They are told it must be in proportion to the blessings that God had given each one of them. Tell your neighbor, in proportion to your blessings. Ukiona jirani hakuongereshi ujue, yeye akona shida. Yeye labda ni yule ni wale ambao wanatoa tucho chote. They never consider what God has done for them. Verses 13 to 17, the Feast of Tabernacles. This is another festival. And this festival was celebrated after the hard work of threshing, kusiaga, the grain, threshing the grain and pressing the grapes had been completed. Baada ya wao kuvuna na kujaza their stores, again, they were called by God. So that they don't become like the rich fool whom Jesus talked about in the gospel. You remember the story? of the rich fool, now to live because I have a great harvest. I will eat and enjoy my life. And God looked at him and said, you foolish man, today I require your soul. I pray that we shall not be foolish. I pray that we shall not be foolish. We shall be wise enough to remember to go before God with joyful hearts. This feast was treated as an opportunity. You know, the Feast of Tabernacles was treated as an opportunity to remember even the temporary shelters the Israelites had lived in 
during their wanderings in the wilderness. Walipokuja hii festival kule Jerusalem, they never would stay in hotels. They would never get rooms hata kama wewe ni tajiri. They were required to come and cut, you know, branch tree branches and then they make booths, you know, using those branches. And they would stay for 7 days in those temporary houses or temporary, you know, shelters, those booths. And while there, you can confirm that in Leviticus 23, verses 40 to 43. While staying in those booths, God was humbling them, reminding them how he had taken care of their, of their forefathers in the wilderness. It was a moment to be humbled by God so that they don't become, you know, foolish. Let me tell you, pride makes us foolish before God. Wakati tuna develop kiburi cha kuona ni haki yetu. We deserve what we have. We deserve even better. And with an ungrateful heart, we become fools. God was teaching these people to prioritize thanksgiving. Tell your neighbor, prioritize thanksgiving. In Luke chapter 17, Verses 11 to 19. We always read the story of the ten lepers. And we say only one came. And true, only one came back to thank God. And Jesus asked the question, Where are the other nine? The Bible does not give us the answer where they were, is it? It doesn't say where they went. But you know, wherever they were, wherever they were doing, that is what they thought is most important for them. And many of us, when God blesses us, we forget to prioritize, to come back to God with joy for hearts, with hearts that are full of gratitude and generosity, and come and say, this far, God, you have brought me. Wherever they were, they neglected thanksgiving. They did not prioritize it. They went to tell their friends what God, what Jesus had done to them. Maybe they went to tell their, their relatives. But was that important? In the eyes of God, that which was very important was to come back and say, this is your doing, God. Now help me preach to your neighbor, ask them, have you prioritized this Thanksgiving? Some of us, we were given envelopes and wherever they are, we can't even remember. Ask your neighbor, did you remember that envelope? Do they look like they remember where it is? Oh my goodness, it was never a priority for them. They did not look at it as an appointment with God. They thought it is the provost. They thought it is the elder. They thought it is the... Are you among the one who prioritized to honor God? My brothers and sisters, sisters, verses 16 and 17, the book of Deuteronomy, it was mandatory for all people or all men to attend the three festivals. God required them to come. And the Bible also says they should always bring a gift. It was mandatory for them to come. It was also mandatory for them to bring a gift. Studio, can you project verses 16 and 17? I would want to confirm that so that people don't think I'm making things, things myself. That was one. Two, they must bring a gift. And this gift was commensurate with the extent to which God had blessed them. I think studio, they are asleep. They did not hear. Studio, are you able to, to project verses 16 and 17? Oh, you can confirm from your Bibles. They are asleep. Oh, it's there. Oh, three times a year. You are men must. Look at that word. Three times a year. You are men. And the word men there does not exclude women. It's generic. Your man must appear before the Lord your God. Thanksgiving is an appointment before God. 
And when they appear before the Lord your God at the place he will choose that it was at the temple, then they are supposed to do what? At the festival of unleavened bread, that is the festival of Passover, the festival of weeks, we have talked about the festival of Pentecost, is what we called weeks, and the festival of tabernacles. Listen to the next. No one should appear before the Lord empty hearted. When you go for an appointment with God, you don't go empty hearted. Let's go to the next one. Hey, the next verse. He says, each of you must tell your neighbor, each of you must. Yanisiku bebelezwa, must. Wewe urienda ukadharau hiyo bahasha, shauri yako, it is a must. Each of you must bring a gift in proportion to the way the Lord your God has blessed you. Praise the name of the Lord. Wewe diwe unaye jua mambo yale mungu amekutendea mwaka huu. Mambo ambayo mungu amekuepusha nae. Mambo ambayo mungu amekulinda kutokana nae. You know your story with God. Each of you must bring a gift in proportion to the blessings that God has given you. Now help me ask your neighbor, do you think you are ready today? Uh, please listen to the answer. Are they giving you an answer? Ukiona jirani hakuogereshi ujue huyu hajakuja for the appointment with God. Labda hamekuja kumit muanadamu, ama kumit watu egine, ama kuip. God is calling us to be serious about his appointments with us. Praise the name of the Lord. Paul says to the church in Colossae, as I finish, that being thankful requires a proper understanding of the reasons why we are to be thankful. Ukija kutoa shukurani, lazima uelewe vizuri sababu ambazo zina kufanya ulete shukurani. Wacha kuleta shukurani kwa, 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 kwa madharau. Lazima ujue ni sababu zipi. And you know this means thankfulness cannot occur in a vacuum of ignorance. Usipohesabu baraka zako, you can never be thankful before God. Your thanksgivings can never be accepted. Yesterday night we took time with my wife and children and we were asking ourselves, can we list mambo yale ambayo tumeona mungu akitenda miogoni mwetu? So that even as we come to offer our thanksgiving, we have enough reasons why are we appearing before God? What is this we are taking before him? Is it even incommensurate with the blessings he has given us? We can never pay God for our blessings. But we must give something that God looks and says, this person was ready. They took time to prepare. I, read, I was reading a book and the writer was saying, one of the aspects that makes your worship acceptable is preparation. Tell your neighbor preparation. So Paul, in, in Colossians chapter 1, Verses, uh, th verses 12 and 13. I pray, studio, you can project it very quickly. Paul tells the church in Colossae, there are things that as Christians you must always be thankful about. Kado na kupewa manyuba na magari na kulindwa na kutendewa mambo mengine. Paul outlines four things that we must always be thankful about. Four reasons. Studio, Colossians 1 verses 12. And 13. So he says, number one, you must joyfully thank God the Father who, one, has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. Or in, yes, in light. It is God who has qualified us. We did not deserve it. In Ephesians, he says, chapter 2, verses 12, he says, we were far away from God. But God, through his son, has brought us closer. We are now his children. He has qualified us to share in the inheritance of the saints. Number two, he says in the same verse, he has delivered us from the dominion of darkness. We are delivered from the dominion of darkness. This is a reason to thank God for. Paul says, number three, we have been transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his son. Praise the name of the Lord. This is a good enough reason 
to thank God the Father. Number four, he says in verses 13, that God has provided the forgiveness of sins through his son. And Paul says these are reasons enough for us to appear before God our Father, joyfully praising his name that he has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints. You have been delivered from the dominion of darkness. You have been transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. You have been redeemed or, you know, you have been given the forgiveness of sins. Thankfulness is one's expression, an acknowledgement, an appreciation of what God has done. Not just of his person, but what he has done, his grace, his blessings, his sovereign work in our lives and even in the world. Today, as we mark our end of year Thanksgiving, I remind you, Thanksgiving is an appointment with God, not an appointment with man. It is our appointment with God. Let us do it in a way that he will be pleased by our coming. Father, we thank you for the much you've done for us. Even through your dear son, Jesus Christ, we thank you. And as we mark this moment, we pray that you'll be pleased. For those who are ready and who prepared, Lord, accept their thanksgivings. For those who never prepared, Lord, open their eyes. Not to count what they don't have, but to learn to count what you have done graciously to them. Here this is our prayer. And give us this wisdom. We repent of the foolishness of pride. We repent of the foolishness of never prioritizing to thank you and to bring gifts of thanksgivings. Forgive us, Lord. We pray for wisdom.